There's this beautiful bass line and chord progression that you definitely have heard before. And when you play the bass line solo, it sounds incredibly simplistic. So why has it been used for centuries and still until this day? Hey everybody, Xander here. Welcome to Learning Music Skills, the place where I talk about all kinds of music topics for becoming a better songwriter, producer and musician. Let's get creative. This is the bass line that I was talking about and try not to judge straight away because this is just one of the many things that you can do with this bass line. So most likely you've recognized this bass line since it's been used in practically any style and genre of music. But what can you actually do with it? Why has it been around for so long? And most importantly, how do you harmonize it and what kind of melodic tricks can you actually do with it? I have harmonized this bass line in multiple different examples and styles. And also I show you how I use it in a song that I'm currently writing. Just some quick theory to get us started. This bass line works the best when played in a minor key. And what we do is we just walk down the minor scale from the tonic to the dominant or the fifth scale degree as we also call it. When in your bass line you only use notes from the minor scale, we call this the tonal version. But we can also walk the same distance down the scale and fill in all the chromatic steps as well. And you might guess it, we call this the chromatic version. So roughly speaking there are two versions of this bass line, a tonal one and a chromatic one. Here is a harmonized example for the tonal version. There are more ways that you can harmonize this tonal version, but what I showed you just now is a very classical and tried and true way to do it. What I did was use minor chords in their first inversion to make a nice connection from the A minor to the E chord. I could have easily only used chords in the root position and would have been finished in one second. But the thing is the chord progression would get a lot less smooth and also it would have a major character due to all the major chords that I'm playing. But I want it to sound darker with a minor character and that's what this bass line is for. We can even make this chord progression more impactful by using the easy technique of suspensions to add a little bit of tension and interest to the chord progression. Did you notice that the suspensions definitely added some extra interest? But now we can leave the tonal version behind us and let's have a look and a listen at the chromatic version. I harmonized it in a classical way. Let's have a listen. Again, you can see that I used a lot of chord inversions. For the chromatic bass notes to sound logical, to fit in and not too dissonant, you need to use secondary dominance and borrowed chords from the parallel major key. For example, the E and the A are secondary dominance, and the D is borrowed from the parallel major key. If this bass line was a little bit too complicated or classical sounding to your taste, let's check out how this bass line is used with a more modern and straightforward approach. In rock, pop and other more recent genres, we notice that the pattern frequently is not finished or the first chromatic step is skipped, which in our case is G-sharp. Also the harmonization process is a bit easier and more straightforward, but it doesn't mean that it sounds less good. What happens is that you hold the minor chord stationary and just move the bass downwards. And when this tactic is used, the first chromatic step is skipped 
And very frequently, the bass line ends on the minor sixth scale degree. So here's an example where I made a mix between the classical and the modern approach. I do play the full chromatic bass line, but what I try to do is keep all the other notes as stationary as possible. And also I add some extra tension to the chords. Did you notice that the top voice stays on C almost the entire time? When you have a sustained tone like this, it enables you to add more tension and more dissonance to your chord progression. Because the common tone functions as a sort of glue. Now to my previous example I'm going to write a melody. Let's have a listen. Here's how I use this bass line and harmonize it for a demo song that I'm currently writing for my music project called Facing Mountains. I use a pedal tone throughout and use a softer and more minor oriented chords in my chord progression. Let's have a listen. As you can see this bass line is very versatile and really gives you the opportunity to express yourself. It's not without reason that it's called the lament bass. There are multiple ways to how you can use it and here are some tips lined up. Number one, use it as a repeating pattern throughout your song. Number two, use it as an interlude. For example, use it in your bridge section or in your outro. Number three, you could use it as an extension at the end of a section. For example, when you want to conclude something, but you want to make a final gesture. Well, when you use this progression, you will definitely take it home. This baseline truly has great potential and emotional value, but it's also been used a lot throughout music history. So be sure to use it in your own unique way and be sure to experiment. So do you have any music recommendations or maybe some examples of yourself where you use the Lament bass? Of course, share them with us in any case. That was it for the episode on the Lament Pace. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And for now, see you next time.